And I'll just share a couple of reflections with yourselves before I uh, get into talking about the future, and just to linger a little bit more about the past and uh, my experience of the past uh, in this position and in this role. Um, and a message to yourselves, really, as the CAMS community, because you're a significant chunk of the CAMS community. And going forward, if we get this right and we continue to move forward with the momentum that we've got, we're going to get more and more uh, of the CAMS community into this process. Um, we had to fight hard to get the CYPI Act up and started. Anne uh, was involved in that when she was in the Department of Health, and I joined her together with Richard Layard. Um, and eventually, we were successful together with our Department of Health colleagues and many other uh, people lobbying on behalf of children and young people to get the IAP started. What we've managed to do, and this is down to everybody here, people in the front row, people in the back row, the whole, uh, the, the whole of us together in the way that Peter, Peter Fugel very point, helpfully pointed out the layers of the Department of Health, uh, practitioners, uh, kids and young people who are involved in services, all of us together, We've pulled together, we've, we've, we've pulled in a certain direction, and we've pulled our forces, and we've pulled our knowledge and our expertise, and look at what we've done. You know, if, you know I'm so proud of what I've seen today, the way that we've uh, moved things at a kind of breakneck pace, actually, and I loved uh, Duncan's uh, little clip at the end. It, you know, it really has been, you know, quick lay another bit of track before the next thing happens. Well, I'm going to tell you about some more track that we're laying, okay? You've already heard about how much is happening. This is about what we're doing going forward. But my message to you uh, is my observation is that if we pull together as a CAMS community, if we pool our forces in, in the way that we have been uh, in this process, and there has been some contrast between this process and the adult IAP process. So some of you will be familiar. Uh, Ros is here, is here, I'm not sure. Uh, there's uh, other people. Uh, the adult IAP process was much more contentious. We've had our contentions, um, but that was much more contentious and rather more fractious and so forth. <coughs> you guys are a small community. There's only whatever. Barry Nixon will tell you how many people there are in the CAMS community, 5,000, 7,000, something like that. Um, one, of the, one of the things that motivated me into the role that I'm in is the need to expand and develop the provision and make it as good as it can be uh, for children and young people because, in fact, there aren't enough of us to provide for all the young people who have needs uh, in, in, in the community out there. But if we pull together, uh, you know, we can get a lot of things done. And this is an example of it. And so whatever else happens in the future, I want to leave that message with you. Whether we're psychologists or nurses or counselors or therapists or doctors, if we don't, we're very small and decision makers easily ignore us uh, with the best intention in the world, whether that's commissioners, uh, whether that's government, as uh, our minister came today and very helpfully outlined the support that he's given us. But he's given us that support because we've made it possible for him to give us that support by the way that we've pulled together and the way that we've had a direction and a strategy and an approach which is meaningful at all the different sort of levels that we talked about. So do take that away with you. If there's one message uh, from my talk, I'd like you to uh, retain that particular thought. However, we do have plans for going forward to continue this momentum, and that's what I'm going to tell you about a little bit uh, in the next few minutes. And I'm going to hand over to Professor Mick Cooper, who's going to tell you about uh, a particular aspect of those plans in relation to counselling, which we're delighted uh, to have as part of the process. So what I want to tell you about in terms of the future vision is our e-portal that you've heard about a little bit, and I'll give you a little bit more detail about that uh, now. A little bit, a uh, very small amount of detail about the new additions in terms of the therapies, the, the additional therapies that we've talked about today. And a very brief touch on the place of payment by results, or PBR, and how we uh, conceptualize that linking into uh, the CYPI Act uh, development. So to start with the e-portal, um, which Minister and Peter Fonagy spoke about earlier today, uh, we want, we want a, 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 an experience that I've termed a lovely experience. That might not be quite right, but you know how it feels when you go to a website and it just works. It works well, a kind of Apple-type website or you know, something that you interface with where it works easily, where things are one click away, where things are accessible in multiple formats, where you get to where you want to go to quickly and it gives you the sort of information that you want. We want to make sure that this information is 
uh, seen through the lenses of the people who are going to be looking at it. So I'll tell you a little bit about those people. But it's about making sure the information is context sensitive. So the kind of information that someone like me might want to get from a website like that may feel and look very different from uh, other professionals who might be looking at the website who I'm going to tell you about. For example, a police officer uh, or a member of a faith group who's looking after children or something like that, somebody who's not necessarily steeped in the uh, specialism of our disciplines. <coughs> I want it to be something that can be returned to at convenience and easily uh, worked through. We think if it's going to have traction, if it's going to make a difference, it's going to need to be linked to continuing professional development for professionals who are going to use uh, this portal um, so, that, so that it becomes part of their developmental process going <laughs> forward. And we want it to be the go-to site. Many of you will have sites already in your trusts, but I think actually taking a national perspective, uh, there's a lot of duplication taking place, and there's an issue with the level of quality or the level of uh, um, reliability that you can ascribe to the data that you might go to when you go to the website. What we'd like to do is create kite marking, if you like. We want to take the best that there is out there. And as we take this process forward, we'll be interested. We've already had a lot of expressions of interest, of information and stuff that's out there that people have done and developed. We want to hear about that because we're going to be scoping that and putting that together and saying, OK, you know, this is the best that we can find that fits in with the, with the ethos and the philosophy that uh, CYPI Act is about, that Peter so eloquently described uh, for us first thing this morning. So just to restate that, we're looking for quality-driven, outcomes-focused, participation-involved, young people and their parents involved in the participation and process of development. Those are the key cornerstones of what we want to see within this website. So who's it for? Who are going to be the target audiences for this, uh, for this e-portal? Um, we want it to work at multiple levels. So the ambition, as you can see, is not small. It's big. And this is, this is another big piece of work that we're talking about. We want it to be available across settings. So if you like, starting at universal uh, settings, police, youth groups, clergy, charities, local, local authority workers, uh, right through to targeted and specialist health and mental health staff, including primary care staff, crucially GPs and nurses, people at the primary interface, and, of course, the work that Mick is going to tell you a bit more about, the many counsellors in the many schools around our country who are delighted to be pulling in and linking with this process, but it's probably not been very helpful that there's been some separation in the past. The e-portal, and this is all... Uh, the vision, really. We've now got to make that vision a reality uh, over the next 18, 24 months. Is that there'll be elements of the portal that will be about detection and about how we help young people uh, remain well, um, well-being, support. An element to do with how you undertake assessment. Assessment tools, uh, assessment measures, assessment processes. Sources of help and where you would go next. <coughs> and links to the sort of things that Duncan was uh, touching on in terms of our routine outcome monitoring processes uh, within, within, within the CYPI Act, and the details about why you do it, how you do it, what the reasons are, and the utility and the reliability, and all that kind of information for those of you who want it, need it in the right settings at the right time, in the right place. So we're going to link it as far as we can, and we're working, uh, and we intend to work with a, uh, a wide group of professionals representing professional bodies, including uh, the Royal Colleges um, and uh, uh, the uh, BACP and so forth, so that we do have the opportunity to bring this into the CPD frameworks for the relevant professionals, the College of GPs, the nurses, and so on. We're going to scope the many types of emerging e-therapies that we have out there. We don't know which of those are going to be most uh, utilizable for this process, and we're going to look at that. We're going to use the, the National Collaborating Center for Mental Health, uh, which is linked to NICE, to do that in a, in a robust and evidence-based framework so that they can then advise us going forward um, uh, what kind of uh, e-therapies we could link to the website in the future. And we're also looking to uh, link and bring into the e-portal the curricula 
uh, that are being delivered currently and that are going to be delivered for the systemic family therapy and for the interpersonal psychotherapy in the future. So these curricula will be available, but also be utilizable by the HEIs to speed up the training process to, in, it, it, to enhance and support uh, learning from distances, which is an issue across the country in some places for people who are more distant from HEIs and so forth. So that all the time what we're thinking about is how we maximize the reach of the knowledge and the understanding and the skills and the training that we have in this discipline that we work in uh, to the broadest community, to the best uh, good of the young people that, we, that we're looking to help. Okay, new therapies for the future. Uh, you've already heard that uh, we've selected, uh, for the reasons that Peter outlined uh, first thing this morning, systemic family therapy and interpersonal psychotherapy. Uh, to complement the parenting and the CBT that we have already. And we're going to need to develop the process for those therapies like we've done for CBT and parenting and modify and modulate the CBT and parenting curricula uh, in the light of the learning that we're getting from year one uh, that you're telling us about, that you have told us about, and that you will tell us about. And so that's all underway and all moving forward and happening. And we'll be looking to develop the process for... Uh, selecting trainees, uh, supporting HEIs and partnerships to select trainees, deciding the sort of level that these trainees would need to be. Um, we're not going to be, I don't think, going to be starting from scratch. We're not talking about four-year trainings for family therapists. Uh, IPT, of course, has a much more truncated training uh, profile in terms of the time necessary to deliver it, and so that makes it a bit easier. We've got to work through all of that and make that happen. And finally, PBR... <coughs> Uh, for CAMS, PBR stands for Payment by Results, um, and chairs the uh, expert reference group in relation to Payment by Results. There's been days uh, that um, have explained to you in much more detail than I'm going to do now about Payment by Results, and there will be further um, events and meetings. Suffice to say that we're very pleased on the whole that we got this onto the radar, um, that we're not lagging behind adult mental health services who are developing PBR with the strengths and weaknesses that it has. We now will have PBR development for CAMS. Uh, a number of colleagues in this room are part of that developmental process. Uh, what we want to ensure is that it's fit for purpose, as fit for purpose as possible, so that the money is paid for the right thing for the right kids at the right time in the right sort of way. We need to make sure that the tools to do that are correct, and we don't have tools. There's no such thing as a PBR tool for CAMS that you can go out and find off the shelf. It has to be developed, and that's what we've got to do. We want to do that as scientifically and robustly as possible in something that's clearly an applied art, uh, uh, and that's, that's really the whole challenge that we have in CYPI, bringing the science together with the art, if you like, to deliver the right practice. So we need to make sure that the selection, the, cu the clustering, the uh, care packages, costings, and so forth make sense. And crucially, we need to make sure they're based on good care, best care, I would say, um, that we can deliver for young people. What we don't want to do, and, and certainly if any of you are under any illusions, the Department of Health doesn't want to do, is base costings on poor care on substandard care. Nobody wants to do that. We need to ensure that doesn't happen. And one of the ways that we're hoping to ensure that is to link the development and understanding of the metrics to the transforming and transform CYPI app sites. So those of you um, who are interested in that, please speak with uh, Anne York, myself, uh, Miranda Wolpert, who's here, who's part of the PBR development group and so forth, because we'd be keen to hear from you uh, in order to enable that to happen, because we then believe that what we'll be looking at is, as we've been talking about all day today, the best evidence that we have of the best care that we can deliver, and we'll be costing that appropriately. We won't then be, in the future, shortchanging the kids. Make sense? So we're gathering momentum. You might say as if we needed any, but you know, sometimes you have to get hold of what you can uh, at the time that you can. And we were able to get hold of this 22 million pounds to add to our momentum, the e-portal, the additional collaborative, um, the development for counselling. Uh, earlier this year and the end of last year with hours of work at all kinds of times, as people have spoken about already, came to fruition. And so the momentum is rolling forward. Um, and as part of that process, I'm delighted to now hand over to Mick Cooper, who's going to talk about the uh, counselling development in relation to the portal. Thank you. Thanks, Raf.